Well, this is Mr. Jern. I'm going to show you another example of horizontally launched projectile. And by horizontally launched, I just mean that when it is thrown, there is no Y component to the velocity. In other words, it's just thrown completely horizontally. And so initial velocity in the Y direction will be zero. So a couple of things about these types of problems is I've got my general steps to follow. I think they're pretty useful. And so if you just follow them, you should be pretty fine with this stuff. Uh, like with a lot of questions, it's gonna be really helpful to draw a picture. So we have a ball thrown horizontally from a window at seven meters per second, and it hits the ground 15 meters away. How high up is the window? All right, so let's draw that. Here's a little drawing, it's pretty terrible, but it's just to help us visualize. There's our ball. It's thrown with an initial uh, velocity in the X direction, seven meters per second. It's gonna follow this general path. And we know it's going to hit a certain distance away along the X axis, the displacement in the X axis. And what we're trying to find out is how high up is this window? What is DIY? Okay, so this will help us to sort of envision what's going on and list our variables for us. Cause that's our next step is to list the variables. And when we do that, um, like it says, indicate the direction of any vectors, which we will have a couple. <laughs> uh, indicate if they are X or Y variables, very important because you should never mix the X and Y variables because they are at 90 degrees to each other and so they don't interact. So let's list our variables. All right, we have, just like I, I just like to list the same ones over and over again every single time. So our displacement in the X direction is, given 15 meters right here. Our initial velocity in the X direction is also given seven meters per second. It's all moving to the right, so we'll keep them positive. Our acceleration in the X direction, well, there's nothing pushing it. We're ignoring air resistance, so it's zero meters per second squared. Then I move on to the Y's. What's displacement in the Y direction? We don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. How high up is the window? What is the initial velocity in the Y direction? Well, this is the whole idea of a horizontally launched projectile. It is zero meters per second in the Y direction. It's not thrown up, it's not thrown downward, it's thrown horizontally. What is the acceleration in the y direction? Well, it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. One thing we're going to have to want to do, we're going to want to do, we're going to have to do it as well, is we're going to have to find the time in the air. Okay. So let's just kind of separate all that out. So now we are on step three find time using variables from one dimension. Okay, so we got a bunch of variables. How are we going to find time? Well, we have a bunch of equations to choose from. So let's figure out which we should use. Should we use X's or should we use Y's? And because our unknown is in the Y dimension, we're going to end up having to use X's. Look at all these variables we have. We have displacement and we have initial velocity. So let's use the X. So which equation should we use? Well, let's check it out. We want to find time, so well, we could use the average velocity, but I feel like it's just not a really, it's tricky because average velocity isn't given. We're going to be assuming it's average of seven meters per second because there's no acceleration. So you technically could use this and that's fine actually. Um, you can see like it's, 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 it's here too, but let's see what else we got. VF, okay. we don't really let's see do we know vf is well acceleration yeah no we don't know vf we do but um let's let's keep moving on because what's going to happen is acceleration is going to be multiplied by it's zero so it's going to be multiplied by time and then we're not going to find time how about this one d is one half yeah looks like this one will be it because we have our displacement one half times acceleration is zero times time that's going to cancel that's going to be multiplied by zero it's going to be gone vi times time Sounds like we have a winner. So let's try that out. Okay, so I'm using, I'm just gonna write this down here. So I make sure I get it correct. One half times a t squared 
plus vi times time. Okay, we have chosen our equation. <clears throat> um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just like look right here and say, all right, that's zero. So this whole part is going to be gone. And what I would like to do is rearrange this to solve for time. So I'm going to uh, really quickly just divide both sides by vi. Oh, that take care of that. And so the actual equation I'm going to use is if I take displacement in the x direction divided by uh, vi in the x direction, that will give me time. All right. Uh, kind of reminds me, I should have indicated, in fact, I really should have indicated that this is x because we really want to be careful not to mix our x's and y's. So all these are x vectors, all right? Because if we ever mix x's and y's, we're doing something wrong. It just doesn't mix. They don't mix because they're 90 degrees to each other. So time is dx, which is... 15 meters divided by VIX, which is seven meters per second. And if you look closely, this equation is this uh, first equation on our list. It really is. It's just because there's no acceleration that it just worked out. Math is awesome like that. I love it when that works out. So time, this is the time in the air, 15 divided by seven, 15 meters divided by 15 meters per second, or 15 meters divided by seven meters per second put squared this is why you write stuff down you should not put squared uh, you write stuff down so you can see any mistakes you made so time is 2.14 we'll call it seconds so i'm going to put a little circle around that just to kind of indicate that it is important but it's not the final answer to our question so what's next we basically did step three we found the time in the air so now let's move on to step four use time to find the missing variable in the other dimension so we need to find uh basically displacement how high up is it so we look at our equations again and which one should we use we want to find displacement so that's not going to be it this one's not going to be it displacement is one half a do we have a yes negative 9.8 do we have time Ooh, we just found that vi's oh look at look at all right this is the equation once again such a fun little equation all right so let's do that so i'm going to just sort of separate all this out so this is mm, step four i know i really haven't been labeling the steps but because things get a little crazy here i guess this will be step three oh, see i should have just not done this this right here will be step two and this back here was step one i don't even know that's on the screen um so step four is using that equation and i said it was going to be distance in the y direction, I'm remembering this time, is equal to one half times a in the y direction times time squared plus v i y times time. All right, so let's just kind of scooch this party over here, see if we can fit it on our screen. D y, you know, it's not, let's write it underneath it. So displacement in the y direction is equal to one half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times time squared, uh, 2.14 seconds squared. <laughs> Looks like I spoke too soon. There, get rid of that. Um, plus VIY, well, I guess I didn't even have to write any of this, zero meters per second times time which is 2.14 seconds not squared 2.4 seconds that's supposed to be an s okay so we're in out of room here so let's move this up when we put that into our calculator hmm, neighbor dogs they're trying to get in on this Basically, when we put that into our calculator, we are going to get a negative 222.4. Uh, what ends up happening is the seconds here is get squared. It's going to cancel out with those seconds there. And we're going to be left with meters. And I don't necessarily like having a negative as a final answer. 
So I'm going to say it's equal to 22.4 meters downward. All right. And with that, that is essentially how you solve it.